How far would you go to get what you came in all this way for? Your answers. What would you be willing to do? Anything and everything. Where did we come from? What is the origin of our own sort of sentience on the planet? And is it possible that these aliens are responsible for that? And what would happen if we could, if we knew where to find them? What would the effect be on our culture and religion and, and what kind of characters would be seeking out that information? Good morning. I am Meredith Vickers and it's my job to make sure you do yours. We're trying to sell this idea, this notion that there's this beacon out there that anthropologically we've figured out through different cultures all have the same pictogram. They all point towards the same galactic system. It's a star map. No, an invitation. Finally, there's this man, uh, Wayland, who uh, decides to pay a trillion dollars to send us and a team, a crew, into space. I think there might be some confusion about our relationship. Let's say you do find these beings down there. You won't engage them. You won't talk to them. You will do nothing but report back to me. She really is, in many ways, the, the character that fights everything that everybody else is there to do and excited about. Um, she works for the Whalen Company, who built the spaceship and has basically funded this mission. Beautiful painting. It's a mural. Stop, stop, don't touch it. Sorry. Please don't touch anything. She's driven by passion and faith, but when all the kind of worst things happen, she has this inner strength that just kicks in and she becomes this survivor and she changes into a trooper and, and a warrior. You think we wasted our time coming here, don't you? Your question depends on me understanding what you hope to achieve by coming here. Come up with, uh, with this theory that, the, that we are in fact just an experiment. You know, this the same way that we kind of develop things ourselves in, in a very sort of blasé way, which I think is interesting with the David character as well, because he makes those sort of comparisons. You have this character, David, on the ship with them, who basically has a perspective of, hey, I hang out with my creators all the time. and. This isn't anything spec you guys are going to. You might be disappointed, I have to be honest with you. We shot it in London, mostly in Pinewood, and Ridley, together with our amazing crew, created the most fantastic sets. Designing in this building, the absolute of the landscapes, the interior of the ships, the rooms, the suits, the creatures that we might see. Uh, everything was designed here with four or five people. And that went into a thick book. The book is, you, is re, you could reproduce this almost like a series of marvelous color plates. Little did I reckon on Ridley's abiding love of doing what can be done in camera, in camera. And there were cathedral-sized sets, just awe-inspiring structures that as long as you were standing in the right place or walking in the right zone, made you feel like you were there. He really is able to create worlds that other people can't, but not at the expense of the actors. That's the greatest thing about Ridley is he just wants you to help him make a great movie. He's not looking to drive the ship his way every day. He is really hoping you will help flesh out the script and these characters and, and choreograph this dance with him. He's in control of the vision and the story that he wants to tell. And when I watch his films, I am mesmerized by his ability to not focus just on incredible visuals, because I do think he's an artist and he sees things like a painter and a sculptor and the core of, of everything that he does is, is uh, storytelling. Brief you the ground crew. When them probes picked up a life form. Just got a pin. What do you need a pick? One click west. 
I really think that this movie is is going to be something that people um, haven't seen before. Everybody back on the ship now. You need to stay calm. It's okay. There's a lot of suspense and there's a lot of gruesome stuff and some pretty sort of scary stuff, I think, as well. He didn't just go back to his alien days, and he's really giving us something that's very, very original in that world. That's really kind of stopped me doing science fiction, because I thought, you know, what? how is it going to be different? How is it going to be new? And I think we've tackled a lot of new ground, which opened up the door to a kind of different form of thinking. Get bolder, get braver, dare to talk about who made us and who made them. You have to stop it. We're not stopping anything, Shaw. We're going home. Yannick, if you don't stop it, it won't be your home to go back to. Where we're coming from and what you know, what our purpose is. It's always been the question that you know humans seem to have asked themselves or looked up into the stars and decided that there was gods up, up in the skies that were sort of dictating how they would live their lives. So it's always something I think that, you know, humans have been driven by and sort of obsessed by. Why do you think your people made me? We made you because we could. Can you imagine how disappointing it would be for you to hear the same thing from your creator?